Hello everyone, we're going to be talking about Calibre today, a program that it turns out I've been calling Calibre for literally 10 years and only just bothered to actually read the name of it. So yeah, I've, and I literally was like, what? And I went here, I was like, Calibre, Calibre, Calibre. Yeah, so it's called Calibre, Calibre, Cal yeah. Anyway, uh, this is ebook management. We're going to talk about ebooks specifically. We're going to talk about Kindles because that's what I have and that's all I can tell you. Um, <clears throat> Calibre is, see I said it right, is a program by which you can take all your royalty-free ebooks, uh, your royalty-free, that's not, well, royalty-free is the word, no, your DRM-free ebooks, that's the word I'm looking for, as well as all the books you may have purchased from other places that I assume are DRM-free as well, to be honest, uh, and you can put them on your Kindle, because as you know, if you've got, a, if you're a Kindle owner, um, you, uh, <clears throat> you're encouraged to buy books only from the Amazon store. Uh, I've had a Kindle for a long time. I've turned off the store on the home view. So when I open my Kindle and I hit home, I just get a list of books, right? And uh, it occurred to me uh, while I was deep, because I'm thinking about buying a new one is the reason this video exists. And uh, as I was thinking about buying a new one, I saw a lot of people who don't seem to understand that Calibre is a thing and they're literally just buying all their books off Amazon. Now, you can buy your books so much cheaper elsewhere, like Humble Bundle, do a lot of book sci-fi book bundles as well. Um, you may get them from other sources. You, you may find there's independent sellers, authors selling their own EPUBs. You might pirate them. That'd be naughty and wrong, and I would never do that. Uh, but anyway, you might have your e-books from somewhere else and you want to get them on your Kindle. And people seem to not think that that Calibre supports the Kindle. So we're just going to go through some basics. Now, for anyone that's come to this video by Googling Calibre, this is a Linux channel, so everything you're going to see here is being done in Linux. The steps should be the same for Windows, but I don't know. So remember that and keep that in mind. That's why my desktop looks different to your desktop. Um, also, I've populated my Calibre with a load of junk data because I never have all these books in real life. So I've populated it with pretend data, uh, <coughs> definitely not other books. So yeah, it's, I'm just saying. So when you see my huge library, you'll go, hey, why has he got so many books? Because it's just pretend data. Uh, so let's have a look at the program. You get, first of all, you get the program over at uh, caliber-ebook.com. It looks like an ad from the 90s, um, but this software is solid. Uh, you can read about here. Now, if you're in Linux, obviously, that was for the Windows guys. If you're in Linux, obviously, just get this from repo. It's in all the repos. And if it's not, change this row because, you know, why would it not be in there? Uh, and let's have a little look and see. So here's all my books in my library. Now, my library is kept in my home folder under Calibre Library. So if I just go to my home folder, I've got a, let me check, let me check. Yeah, I've got a Calibre Space Library in there. I'd prefer a dash, but it's Calibre Space Library in there. Um, I add books to that and that folder, I literally back it up to cloud storage just as is. I don't do anything, I just back it up to cloud storage. And what that allows me to do is uh, I back that up and then if I reinstall my computer, I just pull them down again. That's that's all I do, I just pull them down again. Um, and Calibre has methods by which you can take a book that you've bought in the Kindle store and add it to your library on your hard drive and you can strip out the DRM. Now, I believe in most regions that's, that's very naughty and maybe an illegal, um, but it is something you can do with Calibre if you have the right plugin. I'm, le I'm not covering that, but if you do. Um, I believe strongly that all books should be DRM free. I also strongly believe that you know when an author dies, I'm not sure their family deserve any of the money from their book because they didn't fucking write it. So, you know, uh, I have some interesting thoughts on copyright there that I feel like I need to get in there because I just won't be able to sleep tonight. Um, so, how do we set this up? How do we do this? So I'm going to open my Kindle first, so the screen's on. Um, screen's on. Yeah. Uh, it's in airplane mode, mine is, but not that, that matters. There you go. I'm going to plug it in here, and you should see Calibre do some interesting stuff. So I've plugged it in there, and da -da -da, uh, it's just decided it's connected there, and then any second now, this should go bing and just do things. Not gonna work now, is it? Because there we go, I thought it was like not gonna work now. So now it's detected a Kindle. I've also had a pop-up, um, which tells me it's detected a Kindle on my end as well. Uh, is that actually, is that, yeah, okay. Uh, the pop-up went through, I could show you. But a little pop-up was like, like Caliber connected. Uh, so yeah, you get a notification as well. Um, the ticks on the left here are things it detects on my device, on the main memory. Anything without a tick is in my library, but not on my Kindle. And you can see here that I keep most things on my Kindle. I keep a lot of stuff on my Kindle. So you can see there what I'm doing. Uh, so we can just take a random thing and send it to the Kindle. Um, we're going to find a book that's not really big because there are some electronic books on it that are bloody huge that are not ideal for a Kindle anyway. Um, there we go. Sense and Sense of Been Sea Monsters. That's one of the junk books I've done, I've populated with. Uh, so yeah, we just take that. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to send it. So we're gonna, we can take that and we can go 
right send to device here right and we can tell it to send a specific format to the main memory now kindles as you know read this m o r b r moby format where everything else uses epub epub is like the industry standard but kindles use this but it's not a problem because we just send it in this case it's already converted but we would just literally go send to it sends specific format to main memory and when you do this you'll get a pop-up and it'll ask you what format you would like to send azw3 is amazon's own sort of proprietary format and moby is the one that it will happily use but it's not it's not considered to be the native format i send everything to my kindle in moby because i can just pull them off later and move them to a different e-reader if i want i don't i probably won't have to convert them um <clears throat> You'll notice here it won't. It doesn't. It doesn't have EPUB. I don't know why. But anyway, uh, it just like you just you just send it. That's it. You can send it as plain text if you want to make it smaller, strip out all the uh, artwork, all the formatting assets and stuff, and just send it as plain text. Or for God knows why you'd send it as PDF, but you can. Uh, and then you just hit OK. But what you can do there is you can go uh, set default, right? And if you go set default here, you set main memory as, as default. So you literally go set default. Do this. So now if I just click this, it's just already doing what I've just done. Uh, and when you do it, in fact, let's do that with this one. Send to device. Okay. You'll see in the bottom corner here, it says jobs. And then the jobs come up and it says, you know, update to the device, send in metadata. And it'll take a little bit of a second. It's a few seconds. Basically, it just gives you a list. So you can just you can just hide jobs. And you can just like do this with like a, a, a bunch. Uh, you can just do this with a bunch of stuff. Um, and it'll just queue them up right here. And you'll just, it'll just work through them all. There's no, there's no rush whatsoever. It's absolutely, it, it, it's fine. You just, it'll just keep going and just go for it. It doesn't take long. It takes about, I don't know, about 10 seconds a book, but maybe more because, you know, sometimes books are bigger. Sometimes, sometimes they are smaller. It, you know, uh, you know, with a really big book, I've seen it. If I had a really big book um, that I sent to my Kindle, it was huge. Uh, and it took like two minutes because it was, had a lot of pictures and converting those pictures to take, seemed to, getting the pictures right with the format it seems to take longer than just converting a book with a cover. Um, so yeah, there's, there's that stuff there as well to bear in mind. Uh, you can also take things off your Kindle. So if you go to, you got up here, you've got library and device. So library here is the books on my hard drive, on my computer, and then and then device here. Now, when you're in the device menu, the ticks here show you stuff that's in your library, right? So this is stuff that's in my library. And then, so if something's not got a tick, for instance, this is not a tick, this, this PC Gamer, yeah, in fact, all the PC Gamers, because they're subscription. The PC Gamers here are on my Kindle, but not in my library, so there's a tick. So this tick, <coughs> excuse me, I've just got up, reverses, depending what you're in. So in this case, like, if I wanted to add these PC Gamers to my, to my library, I would literally just right-click, and I would go save to disk, and I'll, that did, or can just hit S. Now, those are DRM'd, obviously, because they're magazines, so that wouldn't work in this case. Uh, and I can't think of a lot of times when you could, when you would have something DRM free on your Kindle to transfer back to your library, but Calibre supports it, and as I said, there are plugins to strip out that DRM, but you'll have to check the law in your areas as well as your own morality. Um, but like things like this, this is like this PC Gamer magazines. I subscribe to the PC Gamer magazine on my Kindle, and it's really on my Kindle like a book. It's great. It strips out all the shit, and I just get like the words, which is what I want. Um, and it just I just leave them on there, and then you know they're not there, so that's fine. Um, I wonder if you could could you could you save them as a PDF? I've never tried doing that. You can also add to library as well, just move to library directly. So move to I think that right. I think add to library sends it to your library, and save to disk. Brings up a does that bring up a do, uh, brings up a save dialog? Okay, so that brings up a save dialog to directly save it. So what we actually want is add to library. Sorry, misspoke there because again, I don't fucking do it. I mean, like, what? Why would I? <laughs> you know, like, why would I do it? Uh, Calibre's got some. If you go back to library thing, Calibre's got some other. See, I said Calibre again because that's what I've been calling it for ages, and it just didn't occur to me it wasn't called that. Uh, Calibre's got some other neat features. If I go uh, Control A, I, I can select all of them. If I wanted to just move a whole bunch there, which is fine. We've got a search up here. Is it Alt-A, is it? Yeah. Alt-A is an author search. So if I click on something by Isaac Asimov, which I've just done, and I go Alt-A on my keyboard, it'll just show me all the books I've got by Isaac Asimov in my library. And then if my Kindle's connected, I can go, okay, they're all on my Kindle. They don't need to do anything. And then just hit Escape when I'm done. Or I can just search there. And if I want to search for uh, Dune, I just do that. And then it will have everything with the word Dune in it. See? Which is fine. Uh, if I want to add a book to this, right? I can just hit add books. So if I've got some downloaded books that I've got from Humble or from an author or from another place, I can just add books. And I can click a book in here. I can just find the book. It doesn't matter what format. As long as it's not a zip, as long as it's unzipped, whatever book I want, I just find that I hit open. It'll just go add into library. 
and then it'll check all the metadata against some databases, I guess, uh, and it'll then go, it'll, or it'll put out the thing, I don't, know, I don't even know how that works now I think about it. Uh, it'll say like, oh, this is already in your library. Do you really do you really want to add it? You can go, like, oh, I skip it, I don't want that. Um, also, you can if they're all in the same folder, you can pick up like 20 eBooks and just import them all, and it'll give the same treatment to every one. Now, it does take a bit longer than you'd expect to import things sometimes, again, depending on how complex and how large the, the file is or how hard the time it has to figure out the metadata. But if it gets it wrong, if it gets your metadata wrong, you do have options. So let's mess with, let's mess with, I don't even know what that is. Let's mess with the moon as a harsh mistress. Robert Heinen, I really like his work. I've only recently got into Robert, my boy Rob. Uh, and I really like his style of writing. He's got some weird political ideas, but I, I really like his, I really like his writing. Um, yeah, uh, edit book just there. Oh, again, we can push T on the keyboard if we wanted to. Uh, the book must be in Mobi formats to edit. Oh, okay. I, I, guess, we, I guess we're not editing that one then. I guess we're not in that one. Is that okay? Uh, yeah, okay. We can't. Uh, that that was. You know what? I'm doing the wrong thing again. It's edit metadata. We want there. We go. I was see the same fucking icon. Look at that. It's the same icon, right? Uh, so let's go, <laughs> let's go back to the moon is a harsh mistress. In fact, we we'll use the search button. The moon is a, and then we'll find that's a terrible search. Good, good work. Good, good work. Uh, Arthur C. Clarke, Venus Prime. There we go. We won't hit T. I should I should probably edit that out now I think about it, but I'm not going to. Edit metadata individually. Okay. We can edit metadata individually. This is what I was expecting. I thought this was a pop-up. I don't know. Uh, we edit metadata individually anyway in this case. And there we go. Where's all the metadata? And that's how you can add junk stuff if you want to just add random text files. Uh, it tells you what format it's in or what format's available. You can add multiple formats. So if you have multiple e-reader devices in your family and they prefer different formats, you can add multiple formats to the same book and they only come up as one listing, which is convenient. The calendar knows they're all there. You can download metadata, ISBN number, the writer, all the stuff you'd want is there. Cover puts there. You can download cover or generate a cover or trim borders. You can you can make basic edits to the metadata. Now, the covers, as a Kindle reader, I've never found the covers to be particularly important. The reason is my Kindle, when it's locked, just shows me random close-ups of typewriters, candles, or deserts, which I hate. But if you've got a Kobo, it will show the cover to the book you're reading when you lock the Kindle. So it's more important to have nice covers when you're doing that. Uh, honestly, though, I mean, I've, I've used, I'm currently looking at buying a new reader for myself as a Christmas present. Um, yeah, I'm planning ahead. And uh, I mean, I've got a Kindle Voyage at the moment. And uh, I'm looking, I'm look, kind of looking at the Kobo, but I'm also like the Kindle Oasis has got a 32 gig of memory, so I could just put all the books ever on there and never have to care. So that might be the device that takes me to my grave sort of thing. Uh, so I'm tempted by that. But even then, with all that 32 gig of memory, I'm not sure I'd bother doing anything with covers. Because like, I'd probably turn that off on. Because do I want people knowing what I'm reading? So if I'm reading in like, I don't know, at work, I'm reading my book and I'm and I'm done, I'll put it down. Do I really want anyone to like see the cover of the book I'm reading? I don't know. Maybe part of the joy of the e-reader is no one knows what you're reading. You can lead a lowbrow trash you want and it just doesn't matter. You know, you can just read, read as lowbrow as you like. Uh, anyway, that's, <laughs> that's a little ramble and insight into my mind because uh, I read some lowbrow shit. Uh, I, like, I also read some good shit, but I read some lowbrow shit as well. Uh, escape there you can see it, it'll take a huge library as well. It'll, it'll This program will manage a massive library without any problems and when you're done with when you're done with your kindle you can just click here you can just be like let me just like, like eject this device and then oh that's the wrong button eject this device let's try it again shall we let my mouse slip it eject this device there we go it's eject the device now the kindle's gone from the charging logo just to a normal screen so it, it's happy now so i can just unplug that now um uh, there you go um there you go my usb cable just a standard usb cable uh and then if you've put some books on your kindle which i guess i have um, it will suddenly, it will suddenly uh, shuffle them and put them in the order of the newest verse on your Kindle. It really should. Sometimes the Kindle seems to fuck up and just like show me a random book on my on my home screen. I'm like, oh great, like, that's something I synced a month back. You've you've just decided oh, I must recent, um, and that seems to be a caching thing. And there is a thing I didn't even you notice there. There was a thing where you could update the cache. Um, that seems to be how you solve that. But one of those things that I don't care enough to bother. I just put my books on there find the book I want I start reading it and I'll just keep doing that till it's over so you know uh, also there's a lot of people talk about why have so many books on e-readers and again this is just like a thing that that is just a, the tutorial bits over you've got you've got everything you need I think but like for me it's just like I just keep it on there because why not you know like I have all my books ever on here and then like 
if I want to read something random, I can. Or if or if the internet goes down, just why would you delete them? Is my point. Like, why would you? I know people who like have like six books in their Kindle. Like, I only keep the ones I really like in my Kindle. Why? Just keep them all. Who gives a shit? They're, like, I think this has got four gig of memory. Um, and it's like I've, I'm like I've, I'm on the way to fill it, but but like, you know, hundreds of hundreds of books on there. But anyway, there are other things you can do in here as well. Things and honestly, I don't really mess with things in here. Um, you can search by tags. You can give them ratings. Like you can actually like, edit the rating and stuff. Uh, you can do stuff with it, and uh, honestly, I yeah, it's got this news that you can fetch news and sync news to your Kindle. I'm not sure about that. Uh, so yeah, I I don't yeah, I don't quite get you know the rest of it's just stuff you can do. It's not it's not stuff that I'm interested in. Uh, I would think that at some point I may go through and I, I just organize things, but I just find like an author like if there's an author I want to look at, I just use the alt A thing. I just like, I'm just view that author. I don't much care about like sorting things into series and stuff. But I might do that as my collection grows. Is if I get more books and stuff, you know, more books that aren't junk data, um, I might start organizing that a bit better. But Calibre gives you all the things you need. Preferences are nice. Uh, they're a bit confusing, and the look and feel doesn't actually give you a dark mode. Um, I know there is a dark mode for Calibre, but I don't. I mean, this is the most time I've spent in Calibre, right? Because like what I do mostly is uh, what I'll do mostly is I'll just like plug it in. I'll get a book, I'll plug it in, I'll copy the book over and I'll leave. Now there are you if you've got a Kindle rather than a Kobo. Oh, and also I should say as well, when you set this up, in fact, let's uh there's a this run welcome wizard. Okay. This is actually important. I forgot to say this. When you first install it, it'll run a welcome wizard and it'll ask you about your device you plan on plugging in. You don't need to plug your device in straight away. Um, but like when you talk Kindle, um the, it won't have the exact model for you so all you gotta do because it's just the file system right so like in the case of the uh of the voyage here you just select oasis slash voyage i know some people with paperwhite gen 2 and stuff get like it doesn't have mine just select paperwhite it doesn't matter uh with the kobos it seems to have more uh more choices with the kobos and it seems to be a bit more refined with different e-readers but you can plug this in and sync, sync it to any e-reader even if your exact model is not listed, as long as you get the brand and the rough generation right, it seems to be absolutely fine. As I said, I've only messed with the, I've only done this with like the three Kindles I've actually encountered, four Kindles generations I've actually encountered, and it's been fine. Um, but that wizard, if you screw it up, you just get the little drop down arrow next to preferences and just run the wizard again. Um, and as I said, in your home directory or your documents directory, if you're on Windows, I guess, uh, you can just go and back up the whole folder wholesale. Like I've synced the actual folder is linked to is a sim link, and I just I just sync the actual folder. So when I add a new book my library it just syncs that across it just syncs that to uh to, to the cloud storage and then if i reload my machine i just pull that whole folder down and it's great it's it's really easy to use because you know as long as you make it in the same place you don't much care if you messed with it which is nice you can also like if you go in that library um that's actually browsable like you can actually like browse that you like it puts the authors and stuff it's actually like it's physical file system stuff there's the lot of the book where was that uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> the way my brain was like, there's Linus Torvalds book there. Uh, yeah, you, um, there it is. But there, it puts each book in a folder, and then all the versions and the metadata in that folder, which is nice. Uh, and you can you can just browse that if you want. So if you was ever stuck without Calibre, um, it's still worth organizing your library in that way anyway, to be honest. But if ever you're stuck without Calibre or it broke or something, you could still access your ebooks with relatively no difficulty. Um, it's just very easy to browse and find the things you want. You might consider it junk data if you're not using Calibre now, I think about it. Um, beside the point, I've talked enough. I've talked for like 20 minutes, 18 minutes, 20 minutes um, about this. And all I've really told you is stick plug in your Kindle and then hit hit send as format. Um, <laughs> that's really all you need to know. You can pre convert. If you highlight a bunch of stuff here, like if you highlight a bunch of stuff, you can convert books to a specific format. You can bulk convert them um, to a specific format. You can, you can just go through this as well. So you can pre convert them. If you've got a low power computer, if you've got a very low end computer and you wanted to move a bunch of books over. Uh, you want to move a bunch of books over, you could definitely do that without problem by just like pre-converting them all to Mobi and then moving them later. Uh, that would save you some time if you really cared. Uh, I don't know if you do care though. I don't know if that's what you need to care about. But anyway, thanks for watching. I've been having Hex DSL. You should read uh, Scott Mayer. He's great. He writes these magic books that I love and have banged on about for many times. They're literally the most fun I've had reading a book. They're silly and fun. You should read them. They're great. Um, yeah, changed change the publisher halfway through, which is weird. I wonder if they just changed their name. I should look into that. Uh, thanks. Bye. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little ramble about ebooks. And I know it's not something you usually find on the channel. But if you want more stuff like this or there's a specific topic you think I know about that you might want me to talk about, let me know. Uh, shoot me an email over at hexdsl at posteo.net. Um, or you can join me on Discord. The link for that is below the video. 
and if you have any more questions about this video just put it in the comments below and ask me and yeah and i will happily answer anything i can and if you'd like to support my work you can do it over on patreon.com slash hexdsl uh thanks okay.